A mono behavior is a base class in C Sharp, which the Unity engine provides, and it allows you to attach your scripts to game objects. So to create a new mono behavior, simply right click, create C Sharp script, and name it what you like. So as you can see, shape is inheriting from mono behavior. And at its base functionality, what this will allow you to do is it will allow me to grab my shape script and put it directly on my object, as you can see there. So mono behavior is actually the only way uh, you can attach a script to an object. So what, what does it provide? First up, as you'll see, it gives you access to these lifestyle hooks. So for example, start will run just once on your script initialization. So you'd put things here that uh, you only want to happen once, for example, um, setting some text or setting a, a health bar or things like that. Um, update is called every single frame. So here you could be looking for, for example, uh, a button press. And then if, that, if, if, if it detects the button press, then you could say to move forward or to rotate or, or what have you. You can also directly reference the object that this script is attached to. So you could write transform, and that there is actually pointing to our shapes transform right here. So we can directly grab it and then we can manipulate it. So if we put this here in update, we could go transform rotate, and then we could do like uh, uh, vector three left times time dot delta time and that would just be a super simple uh well it is rotating i i, I made it go extremely slow but there we go so that this script is directly referencing the transform that it's attached to and it's rotating the shape like that uh, you can also grab references to other components. So let's say we wanted to grab this mesh renderer here. We could go mesh equals a get component and mesh renderer. So that will actually search the game object that it's on and it will grab this reference. And now we should be able to manipulate things like the material like that. And we could change it to a new material or, or whatever you want to do. It also gives you access to a whole load of other lifecycle events, like for example, awake, which is called just once as well, but it's called before start. So I usually use awake methods for my managers. So like if I'm creating a single instance of this class and I want it to be like, for example, a sound manager, if in start, I want to call a, a sound every single time that this shape spawns, I would need to, I would need to make sure that my sound manager has already been initialized. So in my sound manager, I would be using this awake function. And then here in this object, I would use start and then reference my sound manager. Uh, it also gives you access to collisions like, uh, whoops, on collision enter and on trigger enter and all that. So when this shape collides with another collider, it will, it will call this function and then you can, you know, perform your logic, explode or take damage or, or what have you. Another thing that you can do with a, with a mono behavior is you can serialize variables uh, so that you can see them in the editor. So let's actually go back to our rotate function here. Just write this out again. Times time dot delta time. Now instead of just hard coding in the 10 there, I could say public float speed. And I could put that in there. And now on our shape, we'll see we've got this speed parameter here. So we can just put that up. And then we can also edit it in runtime. It could go faster. Now, one word of warning though, exposing variables as public just so that you can see them in the editor is in my opinion, bad practice because not only does this expose it in the editor, it exposes it in other scripts. Um, 
So if, if, if another object or another class got uh, a reference to this shape, I would be able to actually see this speed variable here. So a way that we can fix that is we can make it private, which by the way, will prevent it from being serialized. I'll show you. We now can't see it in the editor, but you can add an attribute called serialize field. And let's just change this to be proper C sharp private convention. Naming conventions. And now it's back. Just like that. And conversely, if you did have a public variable of some kind, let's say you've got this and you, it's your direction, your current direction. Now, because this is public, we will be able to see this in the editor, but this may not be something that you want to serialize in the editor. So you could give it the attribute hide in inspector. And now this is, this is accessible from other classes, but it will, it won't clutter up our inspector here. So just some more mono behavior goodies. So another thing that it gives you is on draw gizmos. And let's just set our gizmo color to red, just so we can see it. Now we can go gizmos dot draw wire sphere and the position of the wire sphere, 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 sorry. Let's say uh, transform position plus vector three right times three. So basically our position that this script is attached to and then three units to the right. And then we'll say the radius of this shape is two. So now on draw gizmos is called consistently while you're in the editor. So you'll see now, I've got a wire sphere that will always be three units to the right of my shape. You can't see it in the game view. You can actually do that. Um, yeah, just turn on gizmos in the, in the, in the view, but this is uh, incredibly handy for, for uh, debugging and level editing and all that kind of stuff. So that's about the scope of this video. Uh, there's a lot to learn about the mono behavior um, and what it what it offers you. So if you want to learn more about it, I'll leave a link in the description. If you like the video or I taught you something, uh, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.